Welcome to Coffee with Clover. I'm your host, Clover Sterling. Thanks for joining us today. Most times we associate our health and wellness with the foods we eat, and we consult our doctors when we're not feeling well. But have we stopped to think that our, that our environment is a great contributor of our body's performance? Here to clarify to us is transformational speaker and writer, Dr. Raja Michelle. Dr. Raja, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me over. It's yeah. nice to have you. Thanks. So sometimes we go around, we're feeling luggy, we're feeling drained. Sometimes we think it's work, but it can be something else that's happening in our body. How so? There are a lot of factors that can affect our health and how we feel on a daily basis. Uh, in the past, because I studied a lot and for almost 11 years, I've been working in the health and wellness field. So my focus there was to, to work with physical, emotional, and mental and spiritual health, which is all aspects of our well-being. And the most aspect that intrigues me the most is emotional well-being and emotional health. And over the years in the practice, I would help people with all these aspects. And it wasn't until recently that I learned that there is a lot more to our health than eating the right food, exercising, and even meditation, and doing mindfulness, and all the things that we talk about on a daily basis. And that shifted the way that I think about health and wellness. So you actually experienced a bit of it, right? And you had to make adjustments. I, I've been doing adjustments for the last 11 years uh, since I left my job at the hospital. And I have been shifting and I have been growing and moving uh, from one field to another. So I spent the last 11 years learning a lot about Chinese medicine okay. and uh, uh, healthy uh, eating because I'm a holistic nutritionist. And I used to practice acupuncture. I do energy healing. So I did all of these things. And then last year, after I decided to not to work as an acupuncturist, and then a few more revelations happened. You know how we're on this path right. when we just keep moving yes. from, uh, it's a windy road, right? And then I got exposed to other factors that I learned about that determine our health. So for example, you know how we always go to the chiropractor, naturopath, for people that wanna do the, the natural route, right. right? Or we go to our physician and dietitian, whatever we're doing to feel better. And then one of the aspects uh, that I didn't think about a lot because I didn't have that awareness that much about it, it's other factors in our environment. For example, like employment. People you know, go to jobs and they're very stressed out. We talk about stress, but we don't talk about employment as a factor in determining our health. So just by looking for jobs, then it can bring stress on. And then that affects the way you eat. Uh, not just by looking for jobs. Uh, being in being a, job, a job, even that, enough. yes, it is stressful enough. And even working in a job that is low paid mm -hmm. compared to a job that is higher paid, right? So this factor alone, whether you are having good income or not, or not which we always knew, right? Mm -hmm. But for some reason, it just didn't. You did it I anyway. Did it. Yeah. And now you're feeling the effects uh, and of it. Feel, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at things, okay, uh, let's say a doctor treats a patient, right? Or someone that goes to natural health. And they're not getting better, right? But because we're always thinking in those aspects, physical, okay, go exercise, go eat uh, <laughs> more healthy, right? or even do some meditation because that's mindfulness, the mental uh, health, right? Or spiritual aspects. And then you forget sometimes where this person is living, what conditions this person is living in. So for example, if they live in a neighborhood that is not 
um, like a high income neighborhood, right. right? Then this person, no matter what, and no matter how he tries, then this health, his health is not going to get any better. Because he's going through different because struggles exactly, to survive. Because of all the struggles, mm -hmm. right? So even like studies and research have shown that people that live in low income neighborhood, they live uh, less than people that live in a higher income neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? So just the living conditions, the housing conditions Affects that we live health. affect our health. Wow. And if we do not rectify that and do something about it, we, our health will always suffer. But I think sometimes too, we depend on our doctors to tell us what's wrong with us. When in fact we can retract to say, I've eaten this wrong or I've been here, I've been there. We, could, we should take our health in our own hands too. True, and that's what I always advocate, right? That we need to take charge of our health and our life right. and the choices that we make, right? But there are choices that you can make in regards to eating, in regards to going and exercising at the gym or going for a walk, right? But how about if you do not have the means that will allow you even to eat healthier? To eat healthier, yes. How do you right? stay on track? What do you do in that circumstances? Well, there is a lot that we can do, and I think a lot of it has to do with our country as well as Canada, because there are a lot of factors that are in place and play a role in health, right? For example, like we talked about income, we talked about employment. Employment is a big factor that affects health. So if someone, let's say working in a part-time job, he knows he has to eat healthier. Definitely. He knows how to exercise, mm -hmm. right? Or meditate or do anything else. But how is he going to do that if he doesn't have income to support him? So it's right? in the back of the mind. I know I'm supposed to do this, but at this point you cannot. And that's when your health gets out of hand. Yes, and that's why we need more safety. Like in, like in what's happening now in Ontario, if you noticed over the last few months, there were all these announcements about, uh, like, let's say, uh, free education, right? For post-secondary education. Yes, Up to grade one. 12, it's free in Canada, right? But students have to pay if they want to go to university or colleges. So now in Ontario, we have that for free. So this is an amazing step in the right direction. But it's for free, but there's a criteria though. Yes, to get it for but free. still it's going to remove a lot of those financial barriers mm -hmm. and more students can then go we'll and study, enroll, right? right? And let's say the money you're going to save for paying those tuition fees, I'm sure you will be able to save some money if, if the government is going to pay some, then you can spend it on eating healthier, on exercising, joining the gym, or doing other things that's going to enhance your health. Or even not, because it's going to be cost out of pocket if you're already low income to go to the gym. You can do, if you're motivated enough, you can go to the park and do your own exercise. There are all kinds of options, Definitely. right? Mm -hmm. But I believe, again, it's about the person. You need to take charge sure. of your life. Right. If you're not happy, let's say, with your job, right? The, the way to get better health is to look for a better paying job, right? That, that brings on stress to be looking for a better job. So it filters down from one stage to the next, to the next. Yes, exactly. Because you're not talking, we're not, we, you can't divide us into different parts, right? Mm -hmm. We're a whole being. Like you have to look at all aspects. And this is the aspect, that's why I talked about it, because, oh, I didn't look at that earlier in the past years. All I was looking at, okay, physical health, emotional health, mental health, and spiritual but it's health. good we have this conversation because how many people really stop to think what's happening with me, you know, not knowing it's your environment. Is that job that you have that's bringing on the stress because you're not yeah. eat healthy? I think we know it, but we do not want to either like think about it or acknowledge it because most of the time we feel we're helpless. And, and so we're busy. Other exactly. Things take like, how are you going to stop and say, oh, okay, you know what? I'm quitting this job now. <laughs> okay. You can't because you, you have do? to pay the bills, you right? Have to pay the bills, you have to but eat. then that trickles into every other aspect of your life, right? Uh, education, for example, higher education, you can get better pay, right? right. 
Uh, if you want to talk about that as well, for the, not just the environment, for us, just being females, we are not really in, in the best position to get better pays as well, because there is still disparity. Definitely. In there Canada, are barriers that we face. Exactly. So uh, females face more barriers, right, to finding jobs, to even staying in jobs, because we're caregivers. But, and then as women, we're go-getters. We're strong, too. We are. So we make it happen. We make it happen, but there are times where, let's say, if you're pregnant, you need to take time off if, uh, when you deliver or if you have complications with the pregnancy. So what does that mean now? You're out of the workforce and you don't have income, right? So definitely it's going to affect it's your gonna health. Because now you have right? that baby to take care exactly, of. Exactly, exactly. So these are the factors that we don't give a lot of thought to. Those little but things. Little things, yeah. but, the, but they are huge and they impact our oh health God. tremendously. Education, being a female, uh, like uh, working part-time jobs. Look at the job security. We don't have job security mm -hmm. anymore. Most of the jobs that are offered are part-time jobs with no benefits. You and I know and if we need to be healthy, let's say you want to go to the chiropractor, mm -hmm. your naturopath, physiotherapy, whatever it you want to do to stay healthy, this is going to cost you money. Definitely. While everything else is covered and the government is offering us free uh, health, these are not. Okay. We'll take a quick break. More coming up. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're talking about our personal well-being and health and how it affects our bodies. Dr. Raja, um, our family dynamic is a big influence. How so? Well, uh, family dynamic is a, a huge part of our well-being. So let's assume you have two families and there is a child growing in a family where there is a lot of disturbances. Emotional health, there's a lot of negative emotions, a lot of anger, fear. You talk about that and that there's a child growing in such environment, right? So then that's a negative family dynamic. And then you have another family where you have the parents, they're very, um, like they, they're loving, both are, are loving, I'm not talking about that, but I'm gonna talk about the way the communication in the family in the goes, family. right? And how they enforce positive attitudes and behaviors in the children. So you find that there isn't a lot of negative emotions flying around, like in anger, parents don't lose their temper easily, right? So that would be a well-structured home then? Uh, Where it, everything it, is going right, they've got the job, sometimes there are problems. No, it's not about just having, you know, it's how you raise the children. How you raise the children. Rather than just, because there are a lot of people that don't have jobs, but they're still positive. Definitely. And they raise the children in a positive in way, positive, yeah. right? It's about the personality. It's about us. About how who you we, are. Exactly, right? who we are, how we deal with emotions. Do we have that emotional intelligence to recognize how we feel mm -hmm. and how to deal with those emotions, right? And then not to project them on our children or our spouse. So the difference between the two families, it's not, I'm not talking about money, financial mm -hmm. aspects, education, nothing. All I'm talking about here is emotions. So how this child, the one that's growing in a negative family dynamic, how is he gonna be empowered? How is he gonna grow up? What is, what is it, how is he gonna feel, right? Because probably if he lives in a family environment where there's anger and fear all the time, then he will feel uh, maybe less of himself or herself. And it would be like, this is the norm. Th this is the norm, right. exactly. But still you have people who can be going through str struggles in, in life, in the home, and they're always smiling, you, never, you can never tell. No, exactly. And that's why I am more interested in emotional healing. So my second book, I talked about uh, different personalities. And that's what makes us different, right? But with that, 
we have different ways of dealing with emotions. So some people, like they, they're angry, right? All the time. All the time. All the time. And they just get it all out on people around yes. them, right? And then what does that do? It causes a chain reaction. They snap go. at you and you're snapping back at someone else because this exactly. one snapped at you. And the younger ones, when they live in such environment, they will learn because what we do as parents, we model yeah. for our children a behavior. This right? is what's being displayed in the home. Exactly. So they think it's okay and they pick yes. it up and they take exactly. it out. Exactly. Right. So for example, even studies that have been done on aggression, right? When they've brought children to watch someone that is hitting, right and someone so then they will go out and they will do the same behavior and that's how they deal because i think it's with, okay because they, they think it's okay, it's okay because they saw that right mm -hmm. so that's exactly what i'm talking about if there's a negative emotion and usually when uh people grow up they have all this negative baggage let's say or emotions from childhood or from life experience right but then we don't deal with them and that's why it's important to, to deal with those emotions. I believe, like when I, in my book, I said, parent your inner child before being a parent, Parents. right? <laughs> so if you deal with that, let those emotions go back to balance, find harmony, inner peace. Then when you get married and then you start your family, at least there's a better chance of raising pos uh, positive, uh, uh, like uh, children with positive environment. Right? What if it's at that time you're single and you're okay, happy, and then you get married and the problem starts? Probably f for some people, we can relate probably that's where it starts. Some people they can, c could be angry being single, not having life going the way they like it. So that anger can start at different levels of life. Anger can start at any, anything can trigger it. It's right? how you deal with it. Yeah, it's how you deal with it. The most important step in my mind is to recognize that you have those emotions and that's when you start dealing with them, right? But if you keep ignoring how many people you know around you that yeah. they keep lashing at others around them and then they don't think they have an issue, right? Definitely. Um, and they keep blaming the other. Let's say a spouse, he gets angry at his wife or she gets angry at her whatever children and then they blame the other person. Blame the other person for right? what you have done. For what they've done. And they feel justified in that way. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes procrastination can cause people to act like that. They know they have a problem and they keep putting off to deal with it. So it escalates. I'll tell you why. Again, uh, it all depends on people's readiness to heal right. and to work with this emotion. It's where you're so we at. are on a journey, right? Yeah. So some people are not ready yet to deal with those emotions. Others, they're right there. So like now, we're talking. So maybe this message, someone is gonna listen to right. it. Right. <laughs> and then, oh, it's just gonna fly and they're not gonna care about it, But right? at some point though, in but, your quiet time, yes. you remember that TV show you watched and you were encouraged. Yeah. This is how I deal with my situation. And that's why I said, it's all about readiness. But first you have to recognize, that's emotional that's intelligence. You need to recognize what type of emotions that you have that you're dealing with so you can deal with it, right? But if you are oblivious and you're in denial, which a lot of people are as well, because that's human nature, it's right? human nature, right. And it's again, it's a coping mechanism, mm -hmm. right? Someone, maybe that's how they deal with their stress, right? But we need, I think at one point to stop and do that self-reflection. Let's sit down and figure out, okay? If I was angry, why I was angry, right? How can I, not do this the next time it happens. If it's the situation or if it's the person. So that's when we can start changing. But if we just go and let things happen and life drives us, how Some, can you deal with sometimes that? Sometimes it's a never ending battle. Have you ever seen it in your practice where it keeps going on with any of your patients and yeah. it never stops? Yeah. How do they find a balance? I'll tell you what, when, especially in energy healing, so when we deal with emotions, like usually, like uh, I give uh, people like exercises to deal with the emotions, right? So that they have to do on their own. So let's say someone comes in and you find that, oh, they're angry or they tell you they're angry, they do those exercises. Then you balance that emotion. 
then another emotion surface. Then mm -hmm. it's like a quest, right? Yeah. Because things happen in layers. And it's, it, you it's didn't not just, just all of a sudden happen that you're angry. You didn't wake up in the morning. That's what I was going to say. And decided to be, oh, I want to be angry today. It's right? more than just waking up today and today's just such a bad no. day. It's a buildup of emotions, of life experiences that we haven't dealt with over the years. Until one day they Until snap. one day you're just like, oh my goodness, you know what? Exploded. And I think that's why self-awareness it's so important if we want to transform our lives, if we want to move to a higher level of consciousness and be aware of what's happening, we need to self-reflect, just even if it's uh, two minutes a day. Sit down. Mm -hmm. For self-reflection. So this needs to be preached and teached over and over so it, it, someone out it, there can it, get it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because, again, you have to train yourself to do this. How many do you know that sit down and self-reflect? Probably people, not People many. have to be willing to get to that place. Yeah, yeah. Be willing to get to that place, acknowledge you have a problem and deal with it. And a lot of times it's hard to do so. That's why people, uh, you do, how many people you know, they, they don't want to even be alone, right? Yes. And yes. they want people around them all the time. They're they not, have this. Uh, they're not, yeah, they, they need that fear. fulfillment uh, from outside mm -hmm. rather than being happy, just sitting with themselves, reflecting. So maybe even we can start, like I said, because I believe in baby steps, maybe two minutes a day. Just let's, you know, sit down, relax, and reflect on you know, what happened during the day. I have a thing within me that I've noticed growing up to this day. I have this laughter, this giggle inside. Doesn't matter what's going on, I, I, I can still be happy. And it's, it's embedded, yeah. it's there. I was born with it. I just have a, a giggle. I could be sitting here talking to you. you know, most times I'm starting my show, I'm so nervous, but I have this laughter inside. Mm. I guess I bring it out. So, because happy, if you're happy, then the stress and stuff will go away. Yeah, yeah, but you know, we're different, right? right? Each person is different. So there are people that are really happy on the inside, but then the circumstances around them, Changes it. the trauma maybe, or they see a lot that's negative, then that may wear them down. Uh, other people, no, they're like, their nature maybe is not like that, right? Mm -hmm. But I think each one of us need to look at something that's positive in their lives and make them happy, no matter what. Because if we just focus the mind on the negative, then again, energetically, that's what we will attract in our lives, yeah, the right? negative is a disaster. Yeah. So at some point you're saying they need a reminder. So when they are falling into negativity, a reminder, be happy, get your giggle out. It's hard to do so though. It is. It's very, very hard. But what Recently, I have been through very, very stressful time, very stressful experience. And it was taking me to focus only on the negative things. And then one day, someone said just one statement to me, one statement. And it made me shift wow. that thinking. And my advice to anyone that gets into that place, of course you need to get the medical advice. This right. is not what we're talking about here. But what I'm talking about is how we can work on ourselves so we can transform our lives, right? Is find that one positive thing in your life, just one. One person, like something happened that morning that made you happy, uh, maybe anything, anything that you can think of and that it helped tremendously for me mm -hmm. to shift my mind mm -hmm. because then I started, oh, I'm grateful. I right. know I have this. So gratitude, gratitude is amazing in shifting that negative thinking because no matter what, that we can still find something good and positive in our lives. Yeah, be grateful and share your experiences with others. You never know they can take away something from that. And that's it for today's show. Thank you for watching. Please join us again next time for coffee and great conversation. See you next time.